My lovely, lovely imps, we have watched the Biden State of the Union. I may have lost my cool at a couple of I may have gone a little too far at a couple of moments, not against Biden, but against some of Biden's pawns and supporters. And I, I apologize. Apologize. I may have lost my cool. But now we're going to see some other people who have not just lost their cool, but completely lost the plot. And that is the Republicans. Okay. The Republicans issued a response to Joe Biden's State of the Union speech. Now, I haven't seen this yet, but I have heard some things about it. So let's find out. Let's watch it together. This is Senator Katie Britt, the Republican response to Joe Biden's State of the Union speech. All right, let's do this. Honor of serving the people of the great state of Alabama and the United States Senate. However, that's not the job that matters most. I am a proud wife and mom of two school-aged kids. My daughter Bennett and my son Ridgeway are why I ran for the Senate. I'm worried about their future. All right, lady. All right, lady. Don't involve us in your xenogender kink, okay? Let's not, let's not, let's not, don't, uh, listen, it's okay. I don't care what you do in the bedroom with your husband, but you know. Future and the future of children in every corner of our nation. And that's why I invited you into our home tonight. Like so many families across America, my husband Wesley and I just watched President Biden's State of the Union address from our living room. And uh, what we saw was the performance of a permanent politician who has actually- Yeah, this is definitely coming off as super authentic, definitely not practiced, no script here, no nothing fake going on here, no professional politicians going on here been in office for longer than I've been alive. Attention, my amazing constituents. You know, I have only ever done anything for the good of my family and the Lord in heaven. And what I saw presented by Joe Biden was a performance only doable by a fake, fraudulent politician. And while you might point out that I myself am a politician, I am a different type of politician. And certainly the studio lights and makeup and staging of this set, which is my kitchen, but it's my kitchen and not an actual set, but it's also a set because I clearly have a big camera and lighting and a makeup team here with me. None of the left pay no attention to any of that. For I am here to tell you that Joe Biden is a faker. Oh God. Dear mama, you're doing more of an impression of, of the orange guy than her. Well, I, I mean, I was, I was doing a, an, a, a parody. Okay. I guess it was a bit of an impression. I did it wrong. Mine was, wasn't was cringy enough. You have too much confidence. You need to do the fake meek thing. I am just a humble homemaker and and millionaire and um, and politician who's on national television on CNBC right now. And I don't have a platform at all because I am simply a tiny mouse. Oh, come on. Oh, never, but I can't do it. Fine. You know what? Fuck it. I'm God damn it. Fuck you people. One thing was quite clear though. President Biden just doesn't get it. He's out of touch. Under his administration, families are worse off. Our communities are less safe. And excuse me. I think I nailed it. She's doing She's doing basically everything that I was doing. Our families are worse off. Our communities are less safe. Our country is less secure. I just wish he understood what real families are facing around kitchen tables just like this one. You know, this is where our family has tough conversations. It's where we make hard decisions. 
It's where we share the good, the bad, and the ugly of our days. It's where we laugh together. And it's where we hold each other's hands and pray for God's guidance. And many nights, to be honest, it's... This feels like it could be the intro to, like, a Tim and Eric bit. Where Wesley and I worry. I know we're not alone. This is where our family discusses difficult issues, like our shortage of eggs. And if it wasn't for the Cinco Me egg, we would never have enough eggs. Now, my husband only has to take one simple pill, and he can lay as many eggs as he wants. Our family was going hungry before we had the Me egg. And so tonight, the American family needs to have a tough conversation because the truth is, we're all worried about the future of our nation. The country we know and love seems to be slipping away and it feels like the next generation will have fewer opportunities and less freedoms than we did. Okay, someone needs to tell her that you don't grin like a maniac when you're supposed to be conveying concern for the future. When you're going, the future is dangerous and danger lurks around every corner. Your children might be destroyed. It makes you come off like the one who's going to be destroying them. It kind of makes it seem like you're going to kill people's children. I, yep, yep, I realized what was wrong in my impression. I wasn't doing the psychopathic grin. I worry my own children may not even get a shot at living their American dreams. My American dream allowed me, the daughter of two small business owners from rural enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> I lived a simple upbringing, the daughter of two boat shop owners, and actually my dad also owned a pool shop that's also what he did. And I, I didn't have any real opportunities, but the American dream allowed me to become a local politician. Guys, Alabama, to be elected to the United States Senate at the age of 40. Growing up, sweeping the floor at my dad's heart. Wait. Wow. I actually, I gotta say, credit, I would not have guessed that she was 40. I, I would not have guessed that. Damn. Hardware store and cleaning the bathroom at my mom's dance studio. I never could have imagined what my story would entail. To think about what the American dream can do across to just one generation in just one lifetime. What are you talking about? Your parents owned a hardware store and a dance studio. You're exactly the type of person who would become a fucking senator in Alabama. That is like, that is that is the, the type, that is the person that becomes a, pro, a career politician. What are you talking about? What do you mean? That's, a, that's like the most stereotypical background you could possibly have. It's truly breathtaking. The, you cannot tell me this isn't a Tim and Eric or, or, or maybe a Nathan Fielder thing. Oh my God, that's what it is. This comes across as a section from The Curse. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare for so many families. The true- Oh, she got serious. She finally stopped smiling. She hit the part in the script where it said, stop smiling. Unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families oh, are Oh, it's hurting. coming back. Our- Why are you smiling when you're saying, our families are hurting. They're gloriously, deliciously hurting. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? <laughs> Our country can do better. And you don't have to look any further than the crisis at our southern border 
to see it. What? What is this? What? <laughs> Our country can do better. Southern border crisis. Oh my God! It's it's the it's the oblivion. A uh, uh, dialogue thing. Talk tough to me. I love tough guys. President Biden inherited the most secure border of all time. But minutes oh, after yeah? taking office, he suspended all deportations. He halted construction of the border wall. And he announced a plan to give amnesty to millions. We know that President Biden didn't just create this border crisis. He invited it with 94 executive actions in his first. Oblivion dialogue option, 94 executive actions. Border crisis, children hurting. One hundred days. When I took office, I took a different approach. I traveled to the Del Rio sector of Texas. That's where I spoke to a woman who shared her story with me. You're from Alabama. Why are you going to Texas? You're from fucking Alabama. Pay attention to Alabama. She had been sex trafficked by the cartels starting at the age of 12. She told me not just that she was raped every day, but how many times a day she was raped. The cartels put her on a mattress in a shoebox of a room, and they sent men through that door over and over again for hours and hours on end. We wouldn't be okay with this happening in a third world country. This is the United States of America, and it is past. Why? I'm sorry, but why would you do a, a ghoulish grin at any point in this entire section? First of all, listen, we accelerated from zero to 60 really fucking fast here, and Terrible fucking nightmarish stuff like this does happen in the world, okay? But it's a very weird jump to go um, from talking about border policy between Joe Biden and Donald Trump and also just, just totally misstating what actually happened when Joe Biden took office and then jumping immediately into an, uh, an unbelievably graphic a uh, story about an anonymous person that she talked to in Texas. All right, let's keep going. It's time, in my opinion, that we start acting like it. Oh, uh-oh. Sex trafficking victim says Senator Katie Britt telling her story during the, uh, during the State of the Union rebuttal is not fair. The woman whose story Alabama Senator Katie Britt appeared to have shared in the Republican response to the State of the Union as an example of President Joe Biden's failed immigration, immigration policies told CNN she was trafficked before Biden's presidency and said that legislators lack empathy when using the issue of human trafficking for political person, purposes. I hardly ever cooperate with politicians because it seems to me that they only want an image. They only want a photo. And to me, and that to me is not fair. Wow, that is that not true? I work as a spokesperson for many victims who have no voice, and I really would like them to be empathetic. All the governors, all the senators, to be empathetic with the issue of human trafficking because there are millions of girls and boys who disappear all the time. People who are really trafficked and abused, as Britt mentioned. And I think that Britt should first take into account what really happens before telling a story of that magnitude. This happened during Bush Jr.'s presidency. Wow. I mean, that is, of course, just like a Republican politician. 
ghoul. Human ghoul. As if the weird, uh, inhuman smiling and hyper practiced, uh, 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 you know, dialogue was was not enough of a hint that this person is uh, is is functioning on a level of evil uh, that is blatantly visible by their actions. Uh, you know, that should that should really sell it home. Jesus Christ. President Biden's border policies are a disgrace. This crisis is despicable. And the truth is, it is almost entirely preventable. From fentanyl poisonings to horrific murders, there are empty chairs tonight at kitchen tables just like this one. I'm not going to lie. I have I have seen like Kingdom Hearts OC reenactment scenes more believable and less wooden than this. Not even joking. Cuz of President Biden's senseless border policies. Just think about Lake and Riley. In my neighboring state of Georgia, this beautiful 22-year-old nursing student went out on a jog one morning, but she never got the opportunity to return home. She was brutally murdered by one of the millions of illegal border crossers. President- Wait, this is actually a really funny way to, st to tell this story because one out of millions did a crime. It's like in her own speech, she undermines her own point. But again, like the people that she's speaking to are like they're they're waiting for activation words. They're and they're they're following the like, oh, sad. You know, it's got like the little light that pops on. Sad now. Angry now. Biden chose to release into our homeland. Y'all, as a mom. I can't quit thinking about this. I mean, this could have been my daughter. This could have been yours. And tonight- Unironically, literally doing the propaganda video from the beginning of Helldivers 2. Oh, sweet liberty! Sound familiar? This could be your family getting killed by bugs. President Biden finally said her name, but he refused to take responsibility for his own actions. Mr. President, enough is enough. I feel like there's a, there's a part of me that resists the urge to do fact checks on this, but I feel like it's a fairly important fact to know whether it's actually true. Was the, remember, the case has not been proven yet. There is a suspect, but they have not, this person has not been proven guilty yet. But is the suspect even one of the people that was granted amnesty by Joe Biden? Do we have any idea when they entered the country? Like, what if, um, what, like, what if that guy entered under Trump? Would this all be Trump's responsibility then? And of course the answer is no, these people don't give a fucking shit. They're telling a emotionally, hyper emotionally charged story for the purpose of manipulation. So th that's, this is the reason why the like fact checking thing doesn't even work that well against these people because they don't fucking care anyway. Innocent Americans are dying and you only have yourself to blame. Fulfill your oath of office, reverse your policies, end this crisis and stop the suffering. Sadly, we know that President Biden's failures don't stop there. His reckless spending dug our economy into a hole and sent the cost of living through- Okay, but it just didn't. That's just blatantly false. Like, verifiably false. You don't 
even have to look far. His, there hasn't been any reckless spending under Joe Biden, and it certainly hasn't dug the economy into a hole. Like, yes, cost of living is up, but none of that has literally anything to do with Joe Biden's spending bills. It just literally doesn't. It's just, it's, I, don't, I don't God, this is crazy. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and spend a lot of time defending Joe Biden, but this is just crazy talk. This is, this is, this is nutso babble. The it's roof. baby babble. We have the worst inflation in 40 years and the highest credit card debt in our nation's history. Let that sink in. Hardworking families are struggling to make ends meet today. And with soaring mortgage rates and sky high childcare cost. Yeah, um, real quick, I wonder, do you think there might have been, um, do you think there might have been, what the fuck happened? It's, it's 2024 now, what happened? 2020, there was something that happened in 2020 and a bunch of people, like, I feel like a bunch of people died or got sick and the economy was really fucked up and corporations got a fuckload of handouts from the government under Donald Trump. What the fuck was it? What was it that I was thinking? What the fuck? Oh yeah, COVID. That's right, a global pandemic occurred. And um, yeah, a lot of people are in fucking credit card debt because of that, because we live in goddamn capitalism. And until you actually address the problem of capitalism, and yes, I mean capitalism is a huge problem. D credit as a structure is, is a necessary part of capitalism. It has been a part of capitalism since the beginning of it. You know, you might not really be able to talk about much until you recognize, oh shit, yeah, as it turns out, under capitalism, when there is a massive disaster, people have to go into debt in order to stay alive. You know who didn't have to go into debt in order to stay afloat? Mega corporations, which your guy fucking handed money out like, like, like Pez candy to. Whatever. Let's continue. Idiots. These people are so lost. They're also struggling to how to plan for tomorrow. The American people are scraping by while President Biden proudly proclaims that Bidenomics is working. Goodness, y'all, bless his heart. We know better. I'll never forget stopping at a gas station in Chilton County when he- I, I'm sorry, but I don't feel like even conservative, look, I don't feel like even conservative Christians would buy this shit. This is the most fake shit I've ever seen in my entire life. This is the type of person who would be like, I, I don't know, maybe they will. I guess some people will. The MAGA cult definitely will. But I feel like this comes off as so goddamn fake. I feel like even the Christians I used to know wouldn't buy into this crap. The gentleman working the counter told me that after retiring, he had to pick up a job in his 70s so that he didn't have to choose between going hungry or going without his medication. He said, I, I did. That's like, that is like the dream of Republicans, you idiot. Republicans oppose, they literally booed at Joe Biden saying that he passed rules combating big pharma during the thing you're talking about. What are you talking about? Everything right. I did everything I was told to do. I worked hard, I saved, I was responsible. He's not alone. I hear similar concerns from fellow parents, whether I am walking with my friends, or whether I'm at my kids' games. But let's be honest, it's been a minute since Joe Biden pumped gas, uh, ran a carpool, or even pushed a grocery cart. Meanwhile- You're having your own little moment there. Biden moment. Well, the rest of us see our dollar and we know it doesn't go as far. We see it every day. And despite what he tells you, our just a grocery, grocery cart. communities are not safer. For years, the left. They, they objectively are. 
they they just ob objectively are safer. Yes, actually, yes, the murder and crime rates are going down. Violent crime rates are going down. That is a matter of fact. Okay, let's go. Left has coddled criminals and defunded the police, all while letting repeat offenders walk free. The result is tragic, but foreseeable. From our small towns to America's most iconic city streets, life is getting more and more dangerous. Oh, I can see. I can see she's been watching those TikToks where people find like a candy wrapper next to their car and then it plays scary music and they go, I was almost human trafficked at the Costco parking lot. Boom, 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 boom. And unfortunately, President Biden's weakness isn't just. I was listening to a true crime podcast while walking downtown after hitting the vape pen and I got so nervous. My town felt so dangerous. What, did anything happen to you, ma'am? No, but I was so scared. Just hurting families here at home. He is making us a punchline on the world stage. Look, where I'm from, your word is your bond. But for three years, the president has demonstrated that America's word doesn't mean what it used to. From abandoning our allies in his disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan to desperately pushing another dangerous deal with Iran. President Biden has... Oh yeah, I forgot. I love that. I love it when MAGA idiots do the the coping thing about Iran. The Iran deal was universally agreed upon to be the safest path forward. Donald Trump, quite literally, his personally, Donald Trump's decision to randomly tear up the Iran deal was quite literally one of the worst things that could have ever happened for the safety of the Middle East and the safety of the rest of the world. He basically personally guaranteed that Iran would charge forward developing nuclear, excuse me, nuclear weapons. And they have because he tore up the deal. It was a phenomenally stupid act. These people live in a complete realm of falsehoods. They may as well, they may as well live in uh, a Pee Wee's fucking playhouse. They may as well live in the goddamn Lord of the Rings. They don't live in reality. They don't engage with reality and they don't care to. Failed. We've- Our world is so dangerous. Every day when I walk outside in my population 200 town, I feel terrified because of the criminals that I've never encountered, but that I've heard are coming to get me. We've become a nation in retreat. And the enemies of freedom, they see an opportunity. Putin's brutal aggression in Europe has put our allies on the brink. Iran's terrorist proxies have slaughtered Israel. Wait. Wait, what? Did she mix up her lines there? She's supposed to be ant. She's supposed to be pro Putin. Uh oh. Oops. She did a slip up. That's what Joe Biden said. Oh, she just agreed with Joe Biden. Oh shit. Br Dark Brandon rising. Really choose and American citizens. They've targeted commercial shipping, and they've attacked our troops nearly two hundred times since October killing three U.S. soldiers and two Navy SEALs. Meanwhile, the Chinese Communist Party is undercutting America's workers. China is buying up our farmland, spying on our military installations, and spreading propaganda through the likes of TikTok. <laughs> you see, the CCP... Oh man, conservatives, they're so fucking funny. These guys, okay, keep in mind that people like this bitch here, 
these people make their kids ins install apps on their phone that are called things like Sky Angel, God's social network. And it'll be an app where the only thing that you can get is like Veggie Tales memes and uh, bi Bible verses every single day in your, in your DM inbo inbox sent to you by various angels. When I was, let me just tell you a quick story about uh, the type of, of propaganda that these people love, okay? When I was a kid, in, growing up in a super, super Christian uh, uh, cult, one of the most popular products that was going around the church was a, um, was a set-top box, you know, like a cable box. I know they're not very popular anymore, but we used to have this thing. Back in the day, we used to have this thing called cable, and you'd have a little box on top. And they had this thing called Sky Angel. And it had a whole bunch of, of, of movies, uh, uh, basically, not like, like preloaded, but it had, like, uh, it had data files for movies. And you could put the, the box, you could attach the box to a TV, a pay-per-view or whatever, or you could attach it to a DVD player. And you could put in a movie like, say, The Matrix. And what it would do is it would automatically censor problematic content in those movies at strategic times. So you'd set up the little sky box thing, the sky angel box, and you'd be like the matrix. Then you'd put the matrix in, you'd press play on it, and then it would start. And it would do things like, it would be like, uh, you know, Neo, he'd be like, you're a real son of a, and then it would blank it out and say clown on the screen instead. And it would do that for whatever movie you set it to. That's the type of stuff that the like Christian Christian hardliners like this person, these these super you know super Republican conservative Christian types. That's the type of a uh, propaganda they love feeding to their children. And then they're like, TikTok exists and it's Chinese communist propaganda. Son of a biscuit. That's another common one. I'll, sh I'll shove it up your toe, you son of a clown. That was one that was really popular. We used to say that all the time when I was in Christian school. People would say that. Shove it up your toe, you son of a clown, as a joke. He knows that if it conquers the minds of our next generation, it conquers America. And what does President Biden do? Well, he bans TikTok for government employees, but. Okay, but th th this is really not landing well. Whoopsies, whoopsies. Also the reason why TikTok was banned for government employees is because TikTok had severe data leak issues, which by the way, there are a lot of apps that should be banned for that. Uh, I feel like they're being a little selective. Uh, Twitter is a kind of not so great on the data safety front. I have a feeling that one's going to be banned for government employees soon too. Creates an account for his own campaign. Y'all, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Look. We all recall when presidents faced national security threats with strength and resolve. That seems like ancient history. Right now, our commander in chief is not in command. <gasps> the free world deserves better than a dithering and diminished leader. America <laughs> deserves dithering and diminished leader. Oh my God. Serves leaders who recognize that dithering secure and borders, diminished. stable prices, safe streets, and a strong defense are actually the cornerstones of a great nation. Just ask yourself, are you better off now than you were three years ago? Me? There's I am for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm doing better than I was three years ago for sure. I don't know. I think a lot of people probably aren't. But also, um, I I have a feeling a lot of people felt like they were doing a lot better once Donald Trump left. I bet a lot of people would have responded that. But I mean, whatever. Let's continue. No doubt, 
we're at a crossroads and it doesn't have to be this way. She did the, she hit us with the Kubrick stare. She did. Wait, my hair is in the way. Hold on, my hair was in the way. Oh my God, why? Why does it keep getting in the way? There's no doubt we're at a crossroads and it doesn't have to be this way. We all feel it. But here's the good news. We, the people, are still in the driver's seat. We get to decide whether our future will grow brighter or whether we'll settle for an America in decline. Well, I know which choice our children deserve, and I know the choice the Republican Party is fighting for. We are the party of hard-working parents and families, and we want to give you and your children the opportunities to thrive. And we want- You know what? <laughs> you know, that, so true. <laughs> so true. So true. You know, my favorite, my favorite hardworking parent moment was when uh, Donald Trump spent all that time with Jeffrey Epstein, <laughs> or maybe that time when uh, Matt Gates. Uh, what did Matt Gates do again? Oh yeah, when Matt Gates was finding underage women to invite to his weird parties and offer them money for sex, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> hardworking parent, am I right? Mo, what about uh, what about when Jim Jordan covered up all that shit? Remember all that child molestation uh, shit that was going on? Remember, remember that? Jim Jordan, hardworking parent right there. I want families to grow. It's why we strongly support continued nationwide access to in vitro fertilization. We want to help loving moms and dads bring precious life into this world. Wesley and I believe there is no greater blessing in life than our children. And that's why tonight, I wanna to make a direct appeal to the parents out there, and in particular, to my fellow moms, many of whom I know will be up tossing and turning at 2 a.m wondering how you're going to be in three places at once and then somehow still get dinner on the table. Uh, maybe if you maybe if you had a hard-working Democrat husband who also uh, didn't think it was gay to help around the house, maybe you wouldn't have to worry about being in three places at once, you know, just saying. Or maybe a wife, you know, you could consider that too, you know. It, what you think about it this way. If if women can be in three places at once to deliver for their kids, imagine what two women can do together. Just saying, just saying. First of all, we see you, we hear you, and we- <laughs> Wow, that's a bold move. A bold move to break out the Democrat line of we see you, we hear you. What is this timeline? Oh! And with you, I know you're frustrated. I know you're probably disgusted by most of what you see going on in Washington. And I'll be really honest with you. You're not wrong for feeling that way. Look, I get it. The I'm going to tell you exactly how you feel. And then I'm going to tell you that you're right to feel exactly how I told you how to feel. Who wrote this? I, at first I wondered, at first I was wondering why the hell did CNBC let this air? And now I'm realizing why CNBC let this air. Because it is one of the most embarrassing and cringe things I can possibly imagine. And by comparison, it does actually make Joe Biden's State of the Union seem better. This is Democrat propaganda right here. This is, this is deep Democrat sleeper cell. This is, this is lib 40, 40 chess. The task in front of us isn't an easy one, but I can promise you one thing. It is worth it. 
So I am asking you for the sake of your kids and your grandkids, get into the arena. Every generation has been called to do hard things. American greatness rests in the fact that we always answer that call. We always answer the call to, to, to run a hardware store slash dance studio. We always answer the call to be petty business, small business tyrants. We always answer the call to write the fakest, most condescending message we possibly ever could. It's who we are. Never forget, we are steeped in the blood of patriots who over- What? I don't think that's the turn of phrase. But it just got really bloodborne in here. <laughs> what the fuck? I am steeped in the delicious, the fragrant blood of champions. I mean, patriots. We're through the most powerful empire in the world. We walk in the footsteps of pioneers who did. They didn't. Wait, they didn't. They didn't overthrow an empire. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? The, the, the British Empire still exists. They currently have a reigning monarch. There is a current emperor of the British Empire right now, currently. You didn't overthrow it. You made a new empire on, a, a, you know, you resisted territorial holdings for sure. Yeah. But what are you talking about? They didn't overthrow the empire. What the fuck we is going on? We now carry forward the same flame of freedom as the liberators of an oppressed Europe. We continue <laughs> to- Wait! <laughs> Holy shit! She actually thinks- Wait a minute, she actually thinks that Americans uh, liberated Europe? What are you talking about? We now carry forward the same flame of freedom as the liberators of an oppressed Europe. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> this is incredible. I didn't ex I didn't think we were gonna get into like old history memes at the end. Remember how I said that these people may as well live in Lord of the Rings? We carry the same flame as the hobbits that dropped the ring into Mount Doom. We carry the light that brought Gandalf back from the grave. And we share the feathers of the great eagles that carried us to our destination, back to our home in the Shire. We continue to draw courage from those who bent the moral arc of the universe. And when we gaze upon the heavens... She just... When you when you walk when you just walk out of Dune 2, I will bend the moral arc of the universe. I will bring glorious jihad to all of the known stars in the name of my father, Duke Leto Atreides. Never forget that our DNA contains the same ingenuity that put man on the moon. America has been tested before, and every single time we've emerged unbowed and unbroken. Our history has been written with the grit of men and women who got knocked down. But we know their story. They should have gotten knocked up. Because they did not stay down. We are here because they stood back up. So now- That's what Joe Biden said. Why are you repeating his logic? Why are you repeating his line? He was the one who said, I get knocked down, I get up again. That's what he said. It's our turn. 
our moment to stand up and prove ourselves worthy of protecting the American dream. Together, we can reawaken the heroic spirit of a great nation. Because America, we don't just have a rendezvous with destiny. We take destiny's hand and we lead it. What? I'm sorry. Huh? What? Can we hear that again? The heroic spirit of a great nation. Because America, we don't just have a Iran. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, but delivering this with like the delivering this with the intonation of like a, a like an antidepressant ad here in America we don't just brighten your day we brighten your life da 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 da, -da, -da, -da. try and brightify side effects include that's a very weird way to, to do this rendezvous with destiny we take destiny's hand. I'm I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for the oh 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 Zambic. Bring it in right here. Hit me with it. I'm ready. And we lead it. Our future starts around kitchen tables, just like this, with moms and dads just like you. And you are why I believe with every fiber of my being that despite the current state of our union our best days are still ahead wait our best days are wait a second hold on a second wasn't that the i feel like there was a campaign that used that one and I, I don't think that was a Joe, that was from a Joe Biden speech. That was, you can, this is from a Joe Biden speech. I just searched a political slogan. Our best day, days are still ahead. And it's all from Joe Biden speeches from four years ago. What the fuck? Did Kim Guilfoyle also say that? The first results say it was Joe Biden. Anyway, whatever, let's go. May God bless you and may God continue to bless these United States of America. Oh, oh, she's struggling to hold it. Oh my God. They, oh, they really did her dirty with this. 10 seconds of holding on that. Watch, oh my God. Can you see the fault lines forming? Oh my God, this is amazing. Incredible. We got a 30 second clip of conservatives reacting to it. All right, let's hear. We got I want to see what the conservatives have to say about it. Okay, let's see it. This is the this is an American uh conservative show. Let's see it. Let's see what they have to say. May God bless you and may God continue to bless these United States of America. I don't, I'm, uh, I'm sure she's I'm a very, fan of her. I'm sure she's very nice. May God bless you. <laughs> Holy shit, that's so good. Oh, that's, ah, I almost knocked over my own goddamn. Hold on, I want to see something. 
It looks like there's a bunch of these. Hold on, I want to see. I want to see this. I want to see what other people have to say. Now I'm now I'm in for it. Ooh. It was an excellent choice to deliver the response to the State of the Union. At 42 years oh, old, she's the Chris Hayes has got a million quotes. Oh, I want to hear the quotes, please. Let me see it. Youngest Republican woman ever elected to the Senate, the first woman senator from Alabama. It's a mother of two. She's married to a former NFL player. She's widely considered to be a rising political star with genuine political acumen. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina even suggested that, quote, she represents the future of the Republican Party. The party clearly expected her to knock it out of the park. New York Times reports that a close ally of Senator Britt sent talking points to conservative influencers ahead of the speech, suggesting words of praise, including, quote, she came off like America's mom. She gets it. They compared her response to Ronald Reagan's famous Berlin Wall speech and described it as reminiscent of his message of that shining city on a hill. Before she uttered a single word, the author of these talking points declared that Britt's speech was pitch perfect. And for the first 60 seconds or so of the speech, it seemed fine. She was smiling at her kitchen table, talking about the future of America, but it quickly took a real turn. We see you. We hear okay, you. Okay, so so far this is just, And oh. we stand with you. The Daily Beast described the speech as, quote, bizarrely delivered with an over-the-top dramatic cadence that left political operatives and observers struggling to make sense of it. The performance was so bad that Republicans, some Republicans watched the high profile speech with a grimace. According to one strategist, Here everyone's effing losing. This the is what I want to see. I want to see the Republican reactions. Let's do it. Conversation was similar on social media where conservative activist Charlie Kirk received a lot of replies to his post asking his followers if they liked. Hold on, I want to find this. Sorry, everybody. I, I want to find this for myself. Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk. I got to find this tweet for myself. All right, let's do it. Let's see it. Let's do it live. We're doing it live. Here we go. Charlie Kirk, did you like Katie Britt's speech? Man, it was so disappointing. It was horrible. Good job, Republicans. You sure sent us your best. Jesus, that was bad. I tuned out after 40 seconds. It was like an actress trying to get the part in a big new movie. No, it sounded like a teenager crying to her parents at about a bad day at school. I didn't watch it. Listening to Tucker J Carlson interview Alex Jones. Content was spot on and I do like her. Delivery was a bit too dramatic. No, very babysitter reading a bedtime story. Why does the GOP have such a hard time getting someone to do a rebuttal? Unfortunately, no. It started with the right tone, but after the first two minutes, it needed to shift to a brighter and more inspirational message. Instead, we got a B-grade Hallmark movie moment with an unknown actress playing the lead! <laughs> The up and down emotions was bizarre. No, the delivery was ridiculous. It was awful. Way too, too dramatic. Oh, that's Lauren Loomer. No, the weird breathy almost whispers and awkward smiling while discussing terrible things happening were very off-putting. Awful. Annoying. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nick Fuentes. Oh, shit. Fuentes didn't like it either. Oh, no. Hey, we got one positive person. Yes, she did a great job. Oh, two positive ones. I cried for the entirety of Katie Britt's speech, which was refreshing after laughing for the entirety of Joe Biden's uh, State of the Union. It was forced and ineffective. I get why they brought her on, but I think it missed the mark. I did. It was real. Damn, Delta Dawn. Thanks for the positivity. It was painful to watch Boo from Bertha Jane. Wow. I'm sorry, but no. I'm a fan. She had a great message, but I didn't completely buy into the emotions. She came off as creepy, over overacting. Hell no. It already won the 2024 Razzie. That was the worst State of the Union rebuttal I've ever watched. She had the same tone and substance of my Sunday school teacher, and I was eight at the time. It was awful. This Republican response lady is super creepy. 
No, we're not 12 year olds. Oh, Gary Bernstein liked it. Vice President Katie Britt. Doesn't seem authentic. She was awful. No, it was horrid. It was so disappointing. Wrong in every way. It was horrible. Absolutely horrible. I feel it was uniparty sabotage by putting her on. Holy shit. That's what I said. It was lib 40 chess. Wow. They hate her. Wow, they fucking hate her. That's incredible. God damn. Well, well, I guess we caught it. I guess we've seen it all now. Oh, I want to see what the... Oh, wait, there's one last thing we can do. Good evening. I want to see the comments. Oh my God, the comments on the YouTube video. She delivers this whole thing like she just killed the person who was supposed to actually give the speech. This chick would be the first to lead the purge. This was the creepiest response I've ever seen from the Republican Party. I literally told my family she must have somebody in the basement right now. I had to see if I was alone in my perception. Based on these responses, I'm not. Potentially the most sociopathic yet Disney Channel delivery I've ever seen. Imagine thinking that every household was still a nuclear family and then blaming Mexicans for everything. Why is she smiling when, ta when talking about how families are unsafe? I'm not American, so politics aside, this is a really scary person. The crazy HOA committee member who comes to your door to remind you you can't leave Amazon packages on your doorstep overnight. Nothing says I'm a Christian who cares about the poor like a golden crucifix studded with diamonds. True! If the Republican Party thinks this is a representation of a suburban woman, it's no wonder they overturned Roe. This is what they think women are like. Wow, so, so out of touch. This is the most insane crap I've ever heard. She smirked while talking about supposedly horrible things. This is about as sick as it can get. This seems like an educational video for psychiatric residents on how to recognize a patient presenting with rapid cycling bipolar disorder during, during an ER interview. Wow, holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> the woman experienced those horrors in Mexico, many miles away from the U.S. Border, border. It also happened 20 years ago during President Bush's term, and the woman didn't confide to Brit. She's already on her website for everyone to read. Hannibal Lecter, I'm the scariest dude ever, real or imagined. Katie Britt, hold my spritzer. <laughs> Oh my god, that might be the best one so far. Oh. She claims she's worried about her children's well-being, but she named her daughter Bennett and her son Ridgeway. Wait, she named her son Ridgeway? Did I miss that? Evening America. My name is Katie Britt, and I have the honor of serving the people of the great state of Alabama and the United States. I am a proud wife and mom of two school-aged kids. My daughter Bennett and my son Ridgeway are- Ridgeway?! His name is fucking- How did I miss that?! Am I an idiot?! His fucking name is Ri Oh god! <laughs> Come on! This is an op! This- this is- this is liberal 40 chess. Joe Biden did it. He did it. He's actually going to win thanks to this lady. Thanks to the son named Ridgeway. My large adult son whose name is fucking Ridgeway. Jesus Christ. What a name. Imagine going to school and being like, My name's Ridgeway Brit. That is the most Republican name. Oh my dear God. My, my cousin, uh, Henry Kluge, and his sister, Clampin Kluge. 
Sometimes we all get together and we're like, Ridgeway, Clampin' and Kluge. I would name my son Banjo before Ridgeway, yet yeah, straight up. My God. Did she have an SUV? It does sound like what you like a name for a a, a make a model of SUV. Wow, that is bad. All right, everybody. I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the Republican uh, response to the Joe Biden State of the Union. I didn't think it was possible for Republicans to make Joe Biden look better, uh, but that did it. And it definitely raised my mood. Anyway, if you had fun reacting to this with me and uh, enjoyed my funny jokes, impersonations, and other general nonsense, make sure that you press subscribe down below and make sure you press like as well, because I'd love to have you as a part of this community.